there, it's Anne here on the Life LDC Knits channel. I'm uh, back with an update um, about knitting because this is a knitting podcast first and foremost and also uh, other crafty things and just life in general after a, a major move at a significant point in your life. So if you want to uh, join me Get yourself a drink of some kind. This is just water and lemon juice because it's a really hot Canada day here, hot and muggy. That's why I'm inside in the air conditioning because Lackey's sitting beside me. I don't know if you can see him. There he is. And he prefers it to be... Oh, let me just... He prefers it to be quite cool in the house, so we have to wear sweaters because if we don't, he pants. So first of all, we're going to talk about knitting. Then we're going to talk about other crafts. I'm going to and I'm going to tell you about a book I just read, and then we'll do a, a life update. So hope you have a few minutes to join me. Cheers. So my current projects are from uh, the most recent Roa Magazine, Roa Magazine 71. Love this magazine. So I am knitting two projects out of this. One of them is by Erica Knight, and it is called, let me just find it. The first one is Comfort. I talked about this one in my previous update because I ripped out um, the, the Kim Hargreaves sweater that I knit in Creative Linen already, and I just found that I wasn't wearing it. It didn't sort of suit my lifestyle, or it just, I just felt bigger and heavier in it, and that's nobody wants to feel bigger and heavier than you actually are. So I bit the bullet and I ripped it out and I started Comfort and I love Comfort. Um, Erica's projects are, they have little details that you do, like they, make, they look, they look uh, really simple, really uh, sort of stylish in their minimalism, minimalism, but they do have interesting details. And this one, I've, I've done the sleeves and they have this little traveling pattern on the sleeve. And I really enjoyed that and I'm on the body, but I, I guess there was things going on, you know, with the move and everything, you've got lots of things to think about. And I just really couldn't sit down at night and watch TV and knit it. And that's sort of my prime knitting time is when we're watching TV together. We, we do our thing during the day and then we have dinner and then we sit down and watch an hour or two of TV at night. So I wasn't enjoying my TV because I wasn't getting my knitting. It was like they go, they go together for me. And if I'm not knitting, I fall asleep and then I forget what was happening. So it, get, it becomes very annoying for both of us. So I decided I needed another project. And I just love the look of this. So this became my next project. It's the Susie Throw by Chloe Thurlow. And... Lo and behold, surprising to, to my knit buddies, I went with the original colors. So I love this. It's like it's like potato chip knitting. You just knit one little one little square motif and then you cast off and you iron it and you put it in the pile and then you cast on for another one. And some of them I can do in one day and sometimes it takes me a whole week to do one, but it's great because you get that little surge of, ooh, just finished, I cast off something I've just finished. So I really highly recommend uh, if you need simple, distracting, but really fulfilling and, uh, and, and satisfying knitting to try some kind of project that you can put, make into pieces and put together. And I'm sure that there's garments that you can do like this, but this just happens to be a throw and I'm looking forward to it because I just love the colors. So let me show you what I've been up to. So the Susie Throw, as I mentioned, by Chloe Thurlow, is done in cotton cashmere. I've never knit with cotton cashmere before, so that was another attraction for me. And uh, it is knit in four colors, along with the ecru as the, 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 the standard, the basic, the simple color that ties it all together, the neutral color that ties it all together. So let me see here. Coral Spice, I love those. There's five of those. And then Pearly Pink. 
five of those. And then Tulip. Actually, I might be getting these, these colors wrong because I haven't looked at my shade card. That might be pearly pink and maybe that one was Tulip. But anyway, you get the point. Four different colors of sort of coral peachy colors. And this one I'm sure is called Golden Dunes. And I've got three of these done. I'm just about to cast off the fourth one and then I'll be doing the fifth one. Now, after that is done, you have to make eight half squares to, to fill out the sides and give you, uh, give you even edges on the sides. So I'm anticipating that they won't take long and I'm really, really, really looking forward to this because it's also got tassels. I love tassels. I wonder if there's another picture in here that shows it off. There's another beautiful uh, afghan in this book. If you're a crochet lover, I absolutely love this one. It's called Rock by Lisa Richardson. That might be my next throw project because I just love these potato chip knitting projects. So, or potato chip crocheting projects. So this might be my next one, and I love the colors in that one too. So uh, let me get back to where was I? I was looking for a, pat, a picture of this throw. There it is. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love that. And look at the fringe on it. So I love a good fringe, so I'm really getting excited about uh, finishing this. And that's what I've been really focusing my knitting on uh, in the past little while. What have you been knitting on? Uh, are you knitting something from the current book? Are you knitting something from uh, a past book? Are you knitting something for the summer? Are you knitting something for your house? Are you knitting a garment? What are you knitting? Would love to hear your comments below. There's been a big sort of switch in the uh, knitting world here in, uh, I'll call, I'll say North America because Canada is, is just a tiny little offshoot of what happens in the US. So the North American knit market. I'm just gonna finish my square while uh, while we chat. Did I mention I got some of these Rowan, where are they, where's the camera? Rowan Focus. Birch needles. I absolutely love them. I love, I love how soft they are in your hands. And I love that they're the perfect length. Just, they don't, jab into you. You just sort of gently tuck them underneath your arm up at your side and it keeps that that tip controlled and you can knit. I really still like knitting with straight needles when I can. So don't shoot me. I know I do love my circulars but if I can knit with a straight needle I will. Okay back to what's happening in the knitting world. It used to be that all the retailers went to a TTNA, the Knitting and Needlework Association uh, trade show in June. It used to be in Columbus, Ohio, and I think they had one in uh, for the winter season in California. I'm not sure. I was very fortunate to be able to go one year with my local yarn store. It's, it is for retailers. I went as a... Um, I went as a employee of the yarn store. I did do very minimal. Every once in a while I would pop in there and help out, but I went as an employee. I got to see the whole scenario of what was happening. And this was way back when I was still selling um, Jameson's of Shetland, Shetland yarns from my basement. And so I met those guys, the two guys that were doing that at the time, and I got to see whatever. There was no, at that time, there was no sign hiding your hair of Rowan at the TNNA. And I gather that in recent, more recent years, Rowan had been at TNNA because I'd seen pictures. But anyway, I don't know what's happened. I haven't really investigated why there is no TNNA this year. Maybe it's COVID, whatever. But the big thing was there was also a big, huge uh, needlecraft, all sorts of needlecraft um, 
retailer conference in Germany called H and H. And all of a sudden I started seeing on the internet, on the social media um, platforms, H and H Americas. And I thought, what the heck is this? And, and I saw that my local yarn store, who's not so local to me anymore, but she's always going to be my local yarn store, Needle Emporium, Julie was heading off to H and H in Chicago. And I thought, ooh, how exciting. So started watching very intently the uh, social media, Instagram and Facebook for H and H. And yes, Rome was there and was represented by Linda Platt, who is um, who's who's been involved with Rowan for many, many years. And all these other uh, companies, including companies from Europe, this brought a big contingent of companies from Europe here to the North American market to to show off their wares. So I think it's going to be an interesting, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the Europe, European companies' products uh, get ex picked up by North American retailers. So keep your eye open. Ask your local yarn store owner if they went to H&H &H or have they heard anything about H&H &H because I gather it was a great success and I think it's going to happen again next year. So bravo to H&H. &H. I applaud you for making the big decision after two years of not, you know, nobody being able to go anywhere or do anything that you guys um, had confidence and, 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 and Congratulations on having the confidence to step up and provide uh, a retailer show that covered all of the different um, needleworks. They had knitting there and, and uh, needlepoint and embroidery. There was fabric there. Now we know fabric is a big thing in uh, the States, like quilting fabric. Now I'm sure that there's another retail event for that in particular. But it was nice it's a shop that maybe covers like there's, there's shops now that have quilting fabrics or sewing fabrics and knitting um there's one of those close to me here i'm going to investigate that for future future uh, blog post but it's it's nice that a shop uh, maybe covers more than one thing so you can go in and look at at more than one hobby at a time and and hey let's face it as knitters a lot of us are sewers or quilters and so putting them together makes a lot of sense so check that out uh, ask your local re your, your uh, local yarn store if they went to H&H &H and uh, just see if they they maybe are bringing in any products that are that they found particularly at that pro at that show excuse me lackey wants down I'm going to try something. I'm going to try and knit the last few rows of this and talk at the same time. Uh, because I have a sewing, a dedicated sewing craft knitting room now, and I have um, been able to set it up with my sewing machines and a cutting table and all my knitting stuff, my uh, stash, my overflow stash is downstairs. It's all organized in bins. I know where it is. I have decided that it was time I felt it was time that I could let my creative juices um, let my creative uh, uh, thoughts go and that a, a couple of my knit friends are actually into quilting one's very into quilting and she sort of infected another one and I was resisting for a while and then it became evident that it was futile I'd avoided COVID but I was going to get sucked into the the world of quilting So I have a, a history of, of quilting that was a little bit of a trauma. So I had to, first of all, get over that. And I just spent, I don't know how long, all my pictures on my phone are all jumbled up because I had a catastrophe with my photos. And so I'm, I had to really look hard to find them. But back in February of 2013, I, along with a knitting, uh, crafting type person friend from here in Canada met up at 
an event in the UK with a friend that I'd met on a previous trip, previous crafting trip with Alan in Norway. So there was three of us. She also knew other people there. So it was a great, a great event. But we went to one of this, the workshops that we did was a workshop with Kaif and Brandon quilting. Don't ask me why I signed up for that because honestly, I knew nothing. I didn't know what a rotary cutter was. I didn't know how to cut squares. I didn't know how to do anything. And so I jumped in in my, my you know, sort of like jump in with your eyes closed and then open them up and, and flail along as best you can. So that's what I did. And uh, I gotta tell you, it wasn't the greatest experience because it was frantic energy of people buying fabric and cutting out squares. And we all were given a, a, a design wall to work on and me not knowing anything about quilting. When I look now at my quilt, my potential quilt on that wall, I wouldn't do the same thing that I did then, but anyway, and, and I'll, I'll be brutally honest, Kaif wasn't, when he did his little walk around and did his little uh, little reports, little comments on everybody's project, <laughs> he, he held nothing back and he did not like my attempt at quilting at all. So I gotta tell you, I felt bruised and battered and probably well, when we left there, I had them roll up my quilt that with all the fabric inside of it. I frankly didn't care whether I saw it again. They, they wanted us to bring it home with us. And I said, no, I don't have any room in my suitcase. And it did. It turned out I probably did have room in my suitcase. But anyway, I asked them to ship it to me. And I thought if it never shows up, who cares? You know, and I seriously thought, I seriously thought if it never shows up, they'd ever send it. Who cares, right? So this was a, a big room of serious quilters and I felt obviously out of my depth. Anyhow, so quilting has not been on my radar until just recently during COVID and, you know, little, little knit nights had turned into a little bit of chatting about quilting and I thought, okay, fine. So um, quilting is, is coming onto my radar. Oops, I see I made a mistake here. Did I? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Yes, I have made a mistake. Shows you. Okay, I can't be able to knit on this because I have to fix the problem. Okay, give me a minute. I'll fix my problem. Okay, it wasn't a problem. I was just in the middle of the row, so that's why the two sides didn't match up. Anyway, so back to quilting. So the, during COVID, my knit buddy started abandoning knitting for quilting. And I mentioned to you in a, a video a couple of episodes ago uh, about English paper piecing. And I did do that and I quite enjoyed it. And I made that little uh, bolster. And, uh, and I thought, okay, fine. Maybe that's something I'll sort of tuck into my back pocket. And maybe if we're going somewhere or maybe on a vacation, I'll take a little EPP project with me because, you know, it's really simple, it's flat little you can pre-make your little motifs and you just all you need is a needle and some thread and off you go so I, I parked that for a while and then uh one of my knit buddies went on vacation visit her family in, in Newfoundland and she posted about this bag that her sister-in-law and her sister-in-law's sister and then she decided to make and I thought hmm I could do that and uh it's called the Mondo bag. I'm sure, if you're a quilter, I'm sure you've heard about it. It's Quilt Smart, the Mondo bag. It's made with um, printed interfacing, so it makes the piecing really simple. And so I dug out all those fabrics from that quilt from the CAFE workshop that I had just, when they arrived, I just threw them in one of my bins, dug them out, came up, sorted them out, started cutting. I think it's 192 squares you have to cut. 192. You have to cut 192 two and a half inch squares for the bag itself. And so that's what I did. I cut out 192 squares. 
so each each it's it's done in panels four panels so each panel is 18 squares so what I try to do is make each panel exactly the same so that what happened is when I put it together I ended up with a nice square on the bottom of the four the same uh, pieces fitting together and so when you look at it you will see that there is dot here dot here dot here I'll just use the dots because they're easy to easy to to you know pick up when you're looking at it and then you make um a lining of course I put a little dotty pocket so I would say I at one time said I think on Instagram that these were all K fabric except for the lining because I bought the lining here but I think I remember I was thinking about that and I remember the um the shop that provided the fabric for the cave workshop probably had other fabrics there but I don't know maybe they didn't because it was a cave and Brandon workshop so maybe it was just all cave fabrics anyhow so I've I've managed to finally put those fabrics to use and this is called a mondo bag it is huge I uh, piece the the bands the shoulder straps or the straps on the one on the outside and just use the lining on the inside so I'm looking forward to um, using that. It's huge. I get it. It says on the brochure that you can take your quilts to Quilt Guild in it because it's that big, right? You can fold your quilt up and take it in it. Well, that sparked an idea. So off I went and I joined the Quilt Guild here, the local Quilt Guild. It's a big Quilt Guild. It uh, had before COVID, 160 members. They've lost a few because people just didn't want to, I guess, rejoin during COVID. But uh, they're, they're planning on starting back up in September. And I went to the last meeting here. Uh, the meetings are here right in my town um, in June. So I went to that and I didn't hesitate. I signed right up because if you want to get into something, you need other people to keep you enthused. And that's what I decided to do. So I have joined the Quilt Guild. So I'll be so my plan is that by the first meeting in September, I want to have a quilt in here to take to the first meeting. Ambitious, I know, but you have to ha you have to set these goals. So while I was doing that um, Mondo bag, I also came across, and I'll look for it. It's got to be here somewhere. Hold on. So while I had the little bits and pieces left from the Mondo bag, I came across a YouTube uh, video. And here's the pattern. I came across a YouTube video. I should get better organized, but anyway, um, for this quilted zipper pouch, and it's by Minky Kim. And I gather she's a big name in, in quilting. This is all new to me, so all these people I'm uh, I'm discovering. And I really loved, I have made uh, little sewing bags before, but I just loved the way it was quilted, and I love this um, sort of edge on the top where the zipper is, and. And you can't see it in this picture, but I really like the way the, uh, there it is there. I really like the way the, the, the bottom is done. So you end up with that, uh, instead of a plain box, you end up with a, a sort of a, a pointy boxed zipper pouch. So I got all my little scraps out and made, found a zipper and, and I ended up making a little zipper pouch to go in my Mondo bag. And I had fun because I did quilt it. I added a, a layer of quilting and uh, batting on the inside and I used the same fabric for the lining and I did different kind of quilting on each piece of fabric either straight or diagonals or crosses I did little little diamonds on this one and I love the little the little bottom on it I think that's really cute so this was a, a pattern that you paid for on her website and she does have um, a video uh, support on YouTube. You, if you're a, a really good seamstress, you would be able to watch her video and figure out how it was all done, but I needed the real life instructions, so that's what I did. So, yeah, I think I'm hooked. I also went to the uh, sort of Jubilee Rowan event, the online, the Rowan Connect 
uh, event and it was not as big as the previous one I'd been to. It was uh, three, three presentations. Yes, I think so. One about the current uh, season projects, uh, the current season patterns. One was uh, an interview with um, Martin Story. And one was an interview, another interview with Kaif about his life and his, uh, his, you know, that encompasses all of the, the fiber arts. So there was a couple of things that came up in that. And I also noticed it when I was watching the H and H, um, clips on social media. There's something very exciting coming this fall for Rowan, if you love Kid Silk Hayes. I think, he, I think, well, I think it's sort of out there, but there's gonna be a whack of new colors. And I think it's very sort of obvious that there is gonna be a whack of new colors because Kim Hargreaves' latest book has a lot of Kid Silk Hayes in it. Now, she always has a lot of Kid, Kid Silk Hayes, so I'm probably just putting two and two together and getting five. But uh, there's going to be, because it's the celebration of Kid Silk Haze this year, it's, I don't know what anniversary it is, there's going to be a boatload of new colors, like so many new colors that you're going to be astounded. So Kid Silk Haze is going to be big, big, big. So think about for the fall that you might want to do a Kid Silk Haze project. There is a new sweater in, uh, there is a sweater design in the latest Kim Hargreaves books that I have got my eyes on because I just love the look at, look of it. So that might be my, my thing. I have to, I uh, haven't ordered the, the Kim Hargreaves book yet, but I think I just might. So there'll be more on that later. But the other thing that I picked up on was the fact that Intarge is coming back. You know, everything comes back eventually. Well, Kaif has never, ever given up on Antarja. And I don't know if you've seen this book, the Say It With Flowers book that, that came out um, in this season. I don't know when it exactly. Oh, it came out in 2021. It's Rowan uh, Copyright 2021. This is classic Kaif. Everything from... This is, this is not in Tarja, this is stranded, but there are true in Tarja, for the Intarja lover. This is all done in felted tweed. Big, huge flowers. Now look at that. That is gorgeous. I love that. And of course, Arne and Carlos have been doing intarsia also to to spice things up. Remember that beautiful cardigan that they have in the is it this book? I think it's in this book. I'm getting so confused. You know, when you when you start looking at too many things and your brain starts going crazy, you're looking at everything. And yes, I'm sure it was in this book, but where is it? There it is. Page 134. Now, I love that sweater. Love the colors. It's done in cotton cashmere, which is what this throw is done in. And I just love the, the soft colors of cotton cashmere. Anyway. Back to Kate. Intarge is coming back. So if you love flowers in particular, this is a gorgeous book. Uh, where is a beautiful cardigan in here? I love this one too. But this could really easily be recolored to your favorite uh, main color. And then just put these pops of color in for the flowers. That is gorgeous. It's the Chinese rose coat. Now, you do see sort of the same ideas from Kaif getting reworked. But you know, what can you do? You, you can't, uh, you can't uh, beat a really good idea. It's worth getting 
rework over the years. Big flower jacket, that was huge back in the 80s, I think. The big flower. So it just seems appropriate. The flowers here are, are blooming like crazy. Um, this is sort of the first time I've had a flowery garden. Our previous garden was all um, easy care, green stuff with a few perennials thrown in. And so when we moved here, um, being close to the lake and sort of the community vibe of, of being, you know, seaside type of thing, waterside, I just went all out with hanging baskets and, and color in the, in the garden. So it's been fun. If you're really into color work, this would be a great book. And again, I think all these are available. And I think all these are available either if you like the hard copy book or you'll find them on uh, Knit Rowan as individual patterns. So, great book. One last knitting update before I go on to um, another another uh, interest that's been keeping me busy lately. This is a knitting disaster. I don't know what I was thinking. And I have no excuse. I should have known better. And I, I as I said, I don't know what I was thinking. But I've shown you a few times my husband's favorite sweater and it was made with fine art Aaron which came and went in a couple of years but I knit this design it was called Zen from magazine 27 which was orig originally done in uh, denim and it also was done in co uh, cotton and um, I adapted the pattern to be used with Fine Art Erin, which is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. But, and you cannot throw it in the washing machine. It's like, it with the mohair in it, it's just like totally felted. And I put it in a bag and I don't know, I don't, again, I don't know what I was thinking. And, and, and to make it worse, I didn't just do it to this one. <laughs> I did it to his second favorite made out of uh, British Sheep Breeds Chunky. And this one didn't feel quite as bad and I can almost wear it, but it doesn't really look good. It looks awful. So I totally ruined his two favorite sweaters. <laughs> so what's a knitter to do? So I said to him, well, I can, let's sit down and have a look at the patterns that are available um, you know, some new patterns. Martin Story's got some really nice new patterns. And... No. He's not so, not so upset about this one. The, uh, the British Sheep Breeds Chunky. But this one, this one, everybody who knows him has seen him in this one. He's worn it a lot. And it he put it on the top of the washing machine, you know, sort of hint, hint, and it needs washed. And I ignored it and I thought, okay, I, 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 maybe I have an excuse here. We actually don't have a laundry tub in this house. I don't know why they don't have a laundry tub. We have a laundry room and it has the washer and dryer and it has hanging stuff in it. And the plan is I'm going to have a laundry tub put in there, but that's not going to happen until the till the kitchen gets done. But anyway, I'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about moving update. But anyhow, I, he said, I want this sweater. And he said, I would really love that yarn again. And I'm like, oh, I can't, there's no way you can't find that yarn. So I'm going to have to come up with some kind of substitute yarn. He really did like the variegated part of it, which I found very interesting because usually he doesn't like that kind of stuff. So, um, if you have any ideas about an iron weight yarn that has variegation, uh, but not too crazy wild colors, because, you know, he is conservative, let me know. I've already taken the buttons off of this because I have to save the buttons. I also, then when I went to find, when I went to get this pattern, I don't have the pattern book. Why don't I have the pattern book? God only knows. 
else. So I had to go on eBay and find it. That was a whole other disaster because at one point I was having it sent to the old address because I didn't haven't used eBay in years and didn't realize I, I had to update the address. It just automatically took my eBay address. So I had to cancel the eBay order and you know redo it again and luckily the the seller was very very responsive and it hadn't already got sent out by the time she read my note so magazine 27 is on its way to me from the uk i'm looking for yarn Aaron weight yarn um with a lovely feel he really loved the feel of this sweater um any suggestions Please have a suggestion for me. Anybody got a whole bunch of this in their stash? I need 10, I think I need 10 skeins. I'd have to look at my my uh, Ravelry, Ravelry list, my Ravelry post, my Ravelry project listing on this. I am keeping my Ravelry projects up to date for my own interest, but I gotta be honest, I'm not really on Ravelry that much these days. But if you send me a message there, I will still get it. So, on to the next adventure. So you guys in the UK are really lucky because you have the great British sewing bee. And through a little bit of internet dipsy doodling, I am able to watch that. Um, in the meantime, I found that it is available here in Canada on a, a sort of a network called Making. Let me just check that out. So I've just been looking on the internet. It's available. Great British Sewing Bee is offered on the Cottage Life TV channel. Never heard of the Cottage Life TV channel. Now, I don't think it's the most current season. Season six and seven. But you would get the general idea. Uh, this is uh, going on a bit, so what I'm going to do is um, try and see if I can put in chapter markers. I don't know if I can do it on my iPad. I might have to, uh, I'll try and put chapter markers in so that you can jump through to get to what you want. So there will be knitting, sewing, knitting, quilting, book, and a moving update. So now for the moving update. Okay, another part of moving that you don't think of when you're starting to, when you, when you actually make the move is that you have to re-establish all your connections. I knew getting a doctor was gonna be a challenge, but gosh, getting a vet was a real challenge. Right after we moved here, we had a big problem with Lackey and uh, had to get uh, our old vet involved as well as find a new vet here and get him on uh, some medication. You know, I got to know the pharmacist really well in the in the Rexall drugs here because I had to run in there and get stuff uh, that was ordered for Lackey. Uh, I didn't really realize that pharmacies did that, but yeah, they no problem. Lackey has his um, has his medication, so that was one thing. Alan had a incident. Um, which was quite frightening. He had a cardiac event, very minor, but anyway, he's fine. But that involved finding out, you know, checking out the hospital and yes, we do not have a doctor and blah, 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 blah. And even right down to like trying to find a hairdresser. Like <laughs> who thought it would have been so hard? But everybody, because of COVID, everybody is backed up. Everything takes longer. To get an appointment, it take you know you have to sort of pre-book everything, and uh, so it's finally I feel like I'm making enough. I've got enough connections now. I got a. We still don't have a doctor, but we have a, a plan with our old doctor in Burlington. We do things by by a virtual consultation, and it actually is working out really well, and. Um, I'm finding more, I'm getting used to popping around to find the things that I want and it's the traffic is like nothing here. So it's really, really convenient to do that. And I'm, you know, I've joined the lawn bowling club and uh, the quilting guild, as I mentioned, and uh, 
the community here, there's a there's a sewing group, um, and there's also a crafting group which I'm going to investigate. So there's opportunities. I've got to you know you've got to get yourself out there to meet other people. So we are doing that. So. So in general, it is a big change. It is scary, but you know, you can't live your whole life not making changes because you don't want to rock the boat. You know, you have to, I think if in, it was perfect for us to make the change. I'm looking forward to Alan getting his situation upstairs sorted out with his, with his uh, hobbies. Can't talk too much about that because that's his stuff. But um, he's been waiting for stuff to arrive to set up his hobby room. My hobby room's been set up almost like it was the first thing that we set up when we got here. Because I, I think he realized and I knew that I had to have something to do. Other it was going to drive me crazy. So um, everything is good. Good, good here. And I love my new garden. And I'm actually going out there and gardening. And uh, I've got a robin trying to make a nest in my one of my hanging planters. And... Um, so yeah, it's all good. Blackie's loving his walks and everything is great. So I'm trying to think about what is going to happen on the next update. This has been a long one. So I, if it turns out to be too long, I'm going to try and put um, chapter markers in it. Um, so hopefully by, so if you have any suggestions for yarn for Alan's sweater, Aaron wait luscious yarn maybe a little little bit gently variegated let me know comment below let me know what you're knitting are you knitting something new are you waiting for the new uh, season to happen again comment below are you a multi uh, a multi fiber enthusiast do you knit and sew do you crochet do you quilt what do you do let me know below and let me know if you read this book and if you watch The Great British Sewing Bee. I would love to know that there's there other bee watchers out there in my little community. Love the book. Don't forget that uh, Intarsia is coming back in. We might have to do something about Intarsia. I don't know, I'll have to dig out that shawl. Oh, should I dig out that shawl that I started? Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay, I don't know. I might need a new. I might need a new project to really get me going in Tarja wise. I think there'll be something in the fall. And uh, I'm hoping that my Afghan, my Susie Afghan, is done by the next time I see you. So, take care, everybody. Stay safe. Hope you're doing well. It's a crazy world out there take it uh it's time to uh really focus on our hobbies and uh and send out good vibes and hope that everything i don't know i just hope that things get better in the world take care bye